In this video, we're going to look at the time series graph. These are very straightforward plots that will show you positions over time, and they're fun and easy to draw, and they show you a lot of good information. So here we are going to begin with some flight data and years and number of accidents. So as before, the X is given first and the Y is given second. In a plot over time, the time will always be on the x-axis, and if you can, try to indicate the year, and I say years, but really it's year, as in like what year was it, not how many years it was. It's just weird how that little letter S can change the meaning very quickly, because we are talking about 1997. And you'll notice I'm not writing it fully out. Most people can figure out what you mean by 97, 98, 99. You do may want to start with when you cross over. Um, you may want to have that 2000 there so people still understand, even though we're talking about airlines. So it'd be a pretty odd leap for someone to think this is 1900. But here we are making our good plots and good faith to show how things, or if there's a, a, a trend, you know, between 1997 and 2007 for major airline accidents. And this does not include private planes, small, uh, small charters. They're, throwing that data in there would increase this quite a bit, but we're talking about like the major ones you would see on the news. So in terms of our accidents, and you'll notice that our accidents, really there's not too many in terms of our range here. Our range would go between zero and four, and the halfway point would be two. So really we're not doing too bad. And for those of you who ears perked up, I did kind of slip a mathematical term in there. The accidents are the range of values and the time is the domain of values. And we'll talk more about domain and range later, but at this stage of the game, all we're trying to do is just plot some points. So in 1997, there were two accidents, and none in 1998. You have to put the zero there because there is a decline between those two years. In 1999, we had two again. In 2000, we had three. And then one in 2001, one in 2002, two in 2003, four in 2004, two in 2005, two in 2006, and zero in 2007. And we're going to connect the dots. You would only connect the dots that are plotted, and some of you might have noticed that, hey, why didn't you plot 2006? And it was intentional for this moment to show you that let's assume that this data wasn't there. You would just connect 2005 to 2007. And it just goes to show that we actually have the data so we can connect them. But in the absence of data, you would not drop the segment down to the x-axis because that would read as a zero. But since we have the data, we can connect them. And that's it. That is a time series graph, otherwise known as the plot over time. So that was pretty simple and straightforward since we had such small numbers. But when we get to big numbers, then you have to start being a little bit creative. Now, this is again the year. So I'm not going to pluralize that because this just talks about the year. And this is 2003. And then this would be 04, 05. Because then you might think that maybe is he going back to 93, you know, or some other year. And again, you'd have to make a pretty big leap to go back to 1903. But still, this is some good math grammar. People can understand what you're talking about there, and you're not having to write everything out. But the average per family, now this starts at 6,783. If you really wanted to mislead people, you'd start this here at zero. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a lightning bolt and this is a stylistic thing, to show that there's a gap between here and here, and I'm gonna start at 6,000. Because if I have to go all the way to 11,957, I'm gonna probably go by thousands. So this is 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 
11,000, 12,000. So this is going by $1,000 increments because this is the amount of money owed per family in dollars. So yeah, I could, since this is pretty short, I should you know just not be too lazy and put in my amounts here as well. So let's plot some points. Now here you just have to be as close as you can here. So 6,783 is about there. 7,379, a little bit before 8,000. Well, actually, ah, I think that was a little too high. That's a little too high. I'm not very happy with that. Because 7,379 would be closer to 7,000 than 8,000, and this would be closer to 8,000. Yeah, I know that was just a little thing, but man, little, little motions mean a lot. This is halfway between 8,000 and 9,000. This is a little bit over 9,000. This is a little bit over 10,000. And now we're at almost 12,000 here, the big jump between a little bit over 10,000 and a bigger jump to 12,000. And now we connect the dots. Now you'll note that unlike the previous video where we had a frequency polygon, that we connected them to the floor. Don't do that. We're not going to the dawn of time to zero, and we're also not dropping off 2009 to zero, okay? This isn't some kind of jubilee erasure of the entire debt here. This is keeping everything year by year by year until we get to that moment of 11,957. So this graph shows a general trend of slow, maybe an exponentially increasing trend. Maybe not as linear as we had thought. And in the previous picture, the trend isn't very obvious. You can see it's kind of sporadic, but centering right around two accidents. So, and some years are perfect, which is, you know, <laughs> we're, we're going to try to strive for that. Well, this is it. That is the end of time series. So the only warning that I have is that please do not get time series graphs confused with frequency polygons, which do have to hit the ground where these only will hit the ground, I understand the pun that I am talking about, an airline problem right here, but they will only hit the x-axis when it turns zero. Thanks for watching.